The Nintendo Switch has been out for a little over seven years, and throughout those years, we've been given so many different kinds of controllers. And honestly, I'm a huge fan of the controllers when it comes to what Nintendo's been able to put out and what some third parties have been able to put out. So I'm gonna take everything that I got and I'm going to rank every single Nintendo Switch controller. What is up you guys, welcome to The Collective. My name is Furman and in this video, we are going to be ranking the Nintendo Switch controllers. But before we get started, don't forget to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more awesome content just like this. I don't know why I hesitated, but um, yeah, here we are. All right guys, let's get into it. Starting in first place, or um, actually, you know, before we start, I should probably tell you that I'm going from worst to best. And remember guys, this is just my opinion. You know, don't crucify me if you don't think I'm right, even though I am right, but don't do it anyways, you know? This is just an opinion and this is just what I believe based off of me using all of these controllers. So yeah, dead last, this little guy right here. This is the Pokeball controller. This is an actual controller that connects to the Nintendo Switch and it has such a little function. It's got a button up top and then it's got the button that you press, that you click, you can see it turns it on and everything. And then, you know, you got the joystick, that's the actual thing, that's how you use it to move. This one is in dead last, not because of the fact that it sucks or anything, it's just because it has limited functions, okay? So, there's just not really any games that you can play. I mean, unless it's a game that requires just two button presses, you know, A and B, because that's essentially what these are. So, and there's not really that many games out there right now that only require that other than Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu, and Eevee. So, unfortunately, because of that, this cute little thing is in dead last place. Now, coming up right after that is the original NES controller. Now, this thing is, honestly, this one really should have been the one that's in last place because this is just a terrible controller. I mean, it plays the games, okay? It plays, it's got a weird rattle, but it plays Nintendo games, okay? It plays two button games just fine and it's got that classic NES nostalgia feel to it. It's amazing when it comes to those things, but, you see right here, it has an L and R button, which is nice to have those little things, but they're almost as bad as the Joy-Con L and R buttons when you're using just one controller. I mean, this is an atrocious, ugh, it is just horrible. This is not comfortable to use. It's not something that you can use quickly or you know for fast button presses. It's just not good. This is a stay away from it. And on top of that, you will not believe what Nintendo did. I mean, clearly they are crackheads. Look at this right now. They thought that it would be a good idea to make this rechargeable by attaching it to the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con rails? What were they thinking? This looks insane. I mean, this just looks absolutely ridiculous. I don't know what they were thinking. Whoever made this is insane. And for that reason, that is why it is in such a low, low spot on this list. This is just not a good controller. And honestly, for the hassle and all that, it's just better. It is just so much better to get something, something else, you know? There's so many other options that are way better than this and that honestly feel better, are more ergonomic and everything. They just, this, this is just bad. This is one that you have because you just wanted to have it and you want to say you have it and that's basically it. Now, right after that, we have the Sega Genesis controller. And you know, this one is low on the list because of the fact that there is just some truly amazing controllers on the Switch. So it's not anything to do with the fact that it sucks or anything. It's just limited functions, you know? It's it's basically just that. It's got the three buttons, the ABC buttons, the start button, and then the nice little D-pad that it comes with. That's basically it as, fun as far as it. Now this one, has something that I forgot to mention the NES controller does not have. It has a home button and it has a capture button. And while nobody gives a crap about the capture button, the home button matters. This means that when you're done playing a game, you can either turn your device off or you could go back to the home menu and then pick something else. And 
that's actually what makes the nes controller even worse it's the fact that you can't do that so essentially you're basically stuck you have to get up and then literally go to your switch or plug in a different controller it's just a hassle you don't want to have to do it's super annoying but this one rectifies it this one does not have it not much to say when it comes to that it's just it just doesn't have very much function it's just not that many games you can play with it you know like you can play all the nes games but like why would you play an nes game with a sega genesis controller that's weird that's weird don't do that so yeah that's why this one's so low on the list all right after that i know you know some people might get triggered because of this but honestly i had to do it i had to do it the nintendo 64 controller is next up uh this one is amazing it's a lot of fun it is just chock full of nostalgia like every time i see this controller i just it just it just does something to me you know what i mean and i love this controller but this controller is just a horrible controller for one the design is just insane i mean who the freak do you know has three hands that can use this the way it's you know not programmed to be used Nobody has three hands, so it doesn't make sense. This didn't make sense back then. It doesn't make sense now. But what I will say it is that this is a better constructed controller than the OG one. The rumble feels way better. Like, it feels really, really good. But, you know, this is another case of, you know, there's just not that much function for it. I don't think you're going to use this controller on anything other than a Nintendo 64 game so because of that that's why it's so low on the list also i know you're starting to see a president here but I, I i promise this is probably the last one that gets that okay this is well this is definitely the last one that gets that but yeah you know it's a classic controller everybody loves it even though it's just a terrible controller just poorly designed but you know that's on nintendo's part that's not anything to do with anything else but yeah that's where that's at and that's why I ranked this one where I did. Now we're starting to get a little bit better. We're starting to get to the point where we have controllers that are actually good. They've got great function and they're awesome. And there's a million reasons why you should get these. So starting next, what, are, what place are we in? One, two, three, four. This is controller number five out of nine, nine controllers. This is in fifth place. This is the Super Nintendo controller. Now, I know you guys might think I'm crazy because I put this one over the Nintendo 64 controller, but hear me out. There is a ton of games that this controller is literally all you need. I mean, a million RPGs only really require this. So it's not just this controller isn't just limited to you using it on the Super Nintendo app. It's not just that simple. You can play most of the Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster games on these like they literally only need that. Like there's just a ton of games on the Switch where this is all you need. And I believe these are like 30 bucks. So for that, you know, and on top of that, you get the best D-pad in the world. This controller is absolutely amazing. I mean, I love it. I cannot stop singing this thing's praises. I mean, it's just a comfortable controller. It lasts forever. It is amazing and it's super simplistic. You know, it's got the convex and the concave buttons and all that stuff. It's just, Something that's really comfortable and also really portable too. You could just stick this guy in your pocket and boom, there it goes. I put it in my pocket. I know you can't see that, but it's in there. But yeah, this is just an excellent controller. And on top of that, it, it is a little bit pricey. I think it's like $30 for one. Uh, but you know, it's just, a, it's just an amazing controller. So yeah, that's why this is in fifth place. Now coming in fourth place, it is the GameCube Nintendo Switch controller. Now what it would be called, I don't, I don't know how to properly say that right. But the GameCube controller, I mean this controller is the controller that just has transcended all of like Nintendo controllers. This in my opinion is the perfect controller. And it's not just perfect for Super Smash Bros. I mean, obviously it's perfect for that. And that's the reason why we keep uh, Frankensteining this beast. I mean, think about it, guys. This, this is a GameCube controller. And it was on the GameCube. It was on the Wii. On the Wii U. And now on the Nintendo Switch. And guess what? It's probably going to be on the next console. 
but it's because it's so good it just makes like this controller is just perfect for super smash bros this is the right way to play that game and i'll be honest like if i get invited over to somebody's house and they ask me if i want to play smash bros and they don't have one of these you know i'd have to respectfully decline because that's insane how do you even do that and this is this is so good that my cousins like my cousins are not super hardcore when it comes to playing smash bros and they only use these like one of them even went out of his way to buy like five or ten of them so goaded not just for smash bros though this is also a really comfortable controller to use for for different games too on top of that we've also been getting a lot of gamecube games you know pikmin stuff like that that you can use this on and it works really well super well so this one is very versatile the only issue that i have with it is that certain games like games that are just switch games like switch standalone games you kind of struggle with these because of how the buttons you know the face buttons are mapped it doesn't like match up quite well so it doesn't feel like it plays right but you know you can you can easily fix this by just mapping the controllers so not that big of an issue but this that's why this one is in that place in fourth place now we are in the lucky three and in third place i had to give it to the split pad pro i mean these controllers are absolutely amazing this in my opinion is one of the best ways to play nintendo switch portably and not po not just portably too because apparently they made uh like the in-between thing that you can strap this thing on and plug it into so yes as far as comfortability this controller reigns supreme this thing is the best way to go when it comes to playing portably on the nintendo switch they're super comfortable and then on top of that they also have back buttons so that you can map things to it you know you can ma map certain button presses you can do turbo i believe on it which is great i mean it is just amazing these controllers are absolutely amazing the only downside to it is that because of the fact that it's a little bit bulkier it is going to make things a little bit harder as far as you know being able to take your switch places so that does kind of suck but you know what you lose you gain in some really really awesome controllers i mean the sticks are amazing i mean this this is just the way to go if you guys don't have a split pad pro i'm telling you guys this right now you have to check one out you have to go and buy it and that also brings me to another point these are actually the split pad compacts but what i have here is the actual split pad pro and these guys are like the big boys these are basically the big chungus ones and these are the ones that i was using for a while and these are obviously not very you know portable you know you can't just take them wherever you want uh they're super thick but that's why they came with the compact ones because those are a little bit smaller well a good like 30 to 40 percent smaller now that i'm thinking about it so that makes it a lot more portable and it's amazing it's so good but the one thing that is missing from this controller i mean it's literally almost perfect even one of the things that i love about this is the fact that it's super customizable too there's so many different kinds and you know i went on a little buying or shopping spree and i bought a couple of different ones there's so many different types of split pad pros and i love them all and i was trying to collect all of them but then they started coming out with way too many so yeah but the only thing that docks a point from this thing and that makes it inferior to the actual joy cons is the rumble and wireless feature these don't have batteries they don't have any of that stuff in it no internals other than you know strap it on and use it so there is nothing when it comes to that and because of that fact the joy cons are better than these unfortunate i know i love these and i would use them all the time if it wasn't for the fact that these don't have hd rumble and they're not actually wireless so yeah that's that totally sucks but at least you do get to save some money because these are generally cheaper than the joy cons so yeah there is that now we are in second place and in second place you guys obviously had to know which one was going to go there the joy cons themselves 
the Joy-Cons, the thing that revolutionized the Nintendo Switch, the thing that made the Nintendo Switch what it is. Now, a lot of you guys, you know, I was chatting with you in the last video, Friday's video, and you guys obviously know that I am not a big fan of the Joy-Cons. I do like the fact that they're extremely portable. I like the fact that they're nice and slim, so they make the Switch super portable. You can just put it in a case and then call it good and then just go. But there's a lot of issues when it comes to these bad boys. For one, Nintendo is literally getting sued because of the fact that these things get drift and they're just built that way, okay? The sticks are made in a way to where like the metals uh the metal friction on the pads and stuff like that just like rubs up against uh, each other and I don't, I don't remember fully what it is but basically there is no way to get around that these are always going to have that and it sucks and it's stupid but yeah that's one of the reasons why i absolutely do not like them and you know the other reason is that the wireless is just not very good either there will be some times where you'll get interference and stuff like that and you know it doesn't happen that often so i'm not going to say it's a complaint that needs to merit a fix or anything like that but it's just really annoying the fact that this stuff is happening especially when when you know you go back to the gamecube era and we had the wave birds and that controller is literally the best controller nintendo has ever made literally almost Sure, I would have put it in this list if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, it's not a Nintendo Switch product. But yeah, that's why I'm putting it in second place because while there is a lot of pluses, there is a lot of benefits to this thing, it's still not my preferred way to play unless, you know, obviously it's just strapped onto the console and I'm on the go and I just don't feel like bringing anything other than the Switch. I'll use these. But other than that, that's basically it. Oh, I did also forget to mention the fact that these are extremely customizable too. There is a ton of different colors when it comes to Joy-Cons, and most of them do come in special edition consoles, which is kind of lame. I mean, I love special edition consoles, but like, hey, like, I don't know why they didn't just like make a bunch of different more colors. And there are a lot of them. There are a lot of them, but there's no like special edition standalone Joy-Con colors other than, you know, the Princess Peach ones. You know, that's basically it. Now, last but not least, in first place, this controller is the best controller on all of the Nintendo Switch. This is the best way to play Nintendo Switch, whether it's portably, whether it's at home, this is the best way to go. I mean, did you have to guess? I don't think you did. It's the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Now, I have the benefit of saying that I have every special edition Nintendo Switch Pro controller. It took a while to get because there was one or two of them. I think this is one of them that um, I had something crazy happen. I found one at GameStop and I immediately bought it. And then I realized that it was a bootleg one. Yeah, it didn't have the, like, nin the Nintendo logo in the back which was insane so yeah i had to return it and then buy it again on ebay and, and it ended up being overpriced i was pissed but i really wanted to get this one obviously because i love xenoblade but yeah this is an amazing controller this is the best way to go and there's so many different ones you know obviously you can just get this the standard black one you don't need to go crazy like i did but there's so many different ones there's so many different colors that it's not even funny not just that, you know, the sticks stand pretty tall. The buttons just feel so good. I mean, even the triggers, you know, I, I'm a little upset that they didn't have analog triggers like, you know, or adaptive triggers like the PS5 has. It's unfortunate. Uh, and that's the only reason why I wouldn't put this, you know, in ranking it for the, the big top dog three consoles. I wouldn't put that one higher than the PS5 because of that. But yeah this controller is just perfectly comfortable it just fits so nicely in your hand it is so easy to use it is so light and the battery lasts forever too the batteries like I, I don't even remember the last time i charged this thing but look still got battery like they they just stay charged forever unless you don't use them because you have too many of them but that's a problem for another day that has nothing to do with this all in all i will say that I love the fact that Nintendo has so many different controllers 
for the Nintendo Switch. And at the same time, as a collector, it does drive me a little bit crazy because it's like, dang, like every month there's always something new to buy. Like, can I get a break here? But, you know, I, I do love the fact that there's so many different ways to play. And that and that is awesome because as humans, we are all different. Like we all have different opinions on how we like to play. And honestly, that's literally why I made this channel, because I wanted to hear everybody else's opinions. But yeah, that is the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And let me know in the comment section, which one is your favorite way to play the Nintendo Switch? Which is your favorite controller? Obviously, you guys know which one mine is, but I want to hear yours. All right, guys. And as always, do not forget to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more awesome content just like this. And we will see you guys on the next video. Peace. Like I said, guys. If you disagree, it's fine. It's okay. Just know that I'm right and you're wrong. Accept it. It's not going to change anything. Come back when you can put up a fight.